Hi, this is Jonathan Victor. I'm going to use TED-Ed to find a video and then use it for teaching purposes. Here I am at the ed.ted.com website. My first big choice is where am I going to find my video. I can search for a video directly on the TED-Ed site by looking under Featured, Series, or Subject, or I can go to YouTube. I'm going to talk more about the choice of TED-Ed videos versus YouTube videos in a minute, but for now, Let's just jump into a YouTube video and get started. Here's something that I'd love my students to take a look at. I can watch the video. But what I really want to do is to use the video for teaching purposes or flip it. So I'm going to click here. Now I have a chance to give my video and my lesson a title a description. My students will have the chance to watch the video and then I can give them some thinking questions, some additional dig deeper resources, and some wrap-up thoughts. Alright, let's give this a shot. We'll start with the description. To save time, I wrote up some things in here which I'll paste in. I have my description. Now, let's fill out the thinking questions. While I'm pasting in my thinking questions, I'll explain a little bit more about the choice I had between getting a video directly from TED-Ed and getting a video from YouTube. If you get a video directly from TED-Ed, it comes with some pre-made questions, and you can choose to keep them, modify them, get rid of them, if you go with a YouTube video, even if there's a parallel video that's both on TED Ed and on YouTube, if you go it go for it from the YouTube direction, it's not going to have any built-in questions. As far as I can tell, that's the only big difference. Okay, I think I'm finished with my thinking questions. Now here we are at Dig Deeper, and you can see there are some tools to provide links. All right. I want to make sure to give people some resources to learn more about Scratch, which gets mentioned in the video, to learn more about something else called Arduino, which I think is similar to the subject of the video, the Raspberry Pi device, and to learn more about flipped instruction, either from my blog or from a blog that a lot of people across the world like reading. So we'll paste those in, make sure that looks okay, great. And if you don't want a section, like maybe you don't want to do the wrap-up questions, you can, click, you can press exclude. Maybe I'll do that to save time. I think we're ready to publish, so I'll click publish. Interestingly, you can no longer edit your lesson once it's published. I wish they'd change that, but it's the way it is. All right, we just published it. Now let's imagine we're students. If I'm a student, this is what the video will look like to me. The title, the chance to watch it, the chance to see the resources that Mr. Fichter provided, and here's where I can answer some questions. For now, I'll just type in sample answer, and I'll save my answer. Here's another place to respond. One more question. It tells me about the additional resources. Okay. Now, let's go back and see from the teacher's perspective what it's like when a student started responding to things. I'll go back to the TED-Ed homepage. I'm going to click Recent Activity. And I did this twice, but let's check out this one. All right, so here's my lesson. Ah, and here my student answers are showing up. 
Yes. And if I had more than one student, I could pull it down and see their answers here. And I can see some statistics also. Ah, yes, the first time I did this, I only answered one question. So I must be looking at the first time I made this video. So it shows they completed one out of three of the think questions. And here's where I can click to see the details of what the student wrote. All right, so that's TED Ed. So the question for you is, how would you use a teaching platform like this?